Hi, I'm Andrea Sullivan, Executive Director of Client Services, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Deborah Dugan, CEO of RED today. Deborah, we're so happy to have you here. Uh, we're talking to our friends and family at Interbrand um, all about the whole notion of that we're stronger, we're better together if we're able to join up individuals, corporations, and nonprofits as we're trying to solve some of the problems in the world, um, but equally meet all of the, our goals as business people as well. Yeah. And our sense is that RED is such a fabulous example of how you bring everybody together. Um, and we'd love to hear a little bit more about the mission of RED and some of the history if you want to maybe start there. Sure. Um, so the history was just that it was solving a problem that needed to be solved. So the Global Fund, which fights tuberculosis, malaria, and AIDS, three very preventable diseases on the planet, um, was put together by the UN and it had a private public charter, so it needed to have countries invest in it as well as corporations. And after its first five years, it had five billion dollars from country leaders and countries participating, but only five million from the private sector. So Bobby Shriver and Bono really came up with an idea, a brand that would get everybody together from the private sector to try to make a difference and see if we can move the needle in the fight against AIDS. So most people associate RED with that first year launch of Oprah, Africa, Gap, Windows, but quite frankly, the iconic partners of Apple, Starbucks, Converse, we signed Coca-Cola this year, SAP, Claro, uh, cell phones in Latin America. These companies together have made a huge difference and have given 200 million to the Global Fund now. Mm -hmm. And that's a staggering amount and has affected 14 million lives on the ground. Uh, so perhaps without RED, without the brand and this innovative cause marketing approach, that money might not have come from corporations in quite the way it did. That's interesting, the whole notion of shared value and how do you make sure that you're striking that balance of what's good for RED and what's good for the partner. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that whole idea of measurement. Yeah, well if it's not good for the partner then it's not good for RED because they won't be a partner much more. Um, so what we try to do, we have a once a year partnership meeting where we brainstorm together. Again, the heads of marketing uh, come in and we have wacky ideas and sessions and we try to think of the win-win-win, the win for the consumer, the win for the company, and of course the win in saving lives. So with that as your basis, the sky's the limit. And we try to do things that have never been done before. And that's a challenge and it has to be really big, uh, which is also a challenge. But w once you get it started, um, and it's not artificial, it's like part of everybody's DNA uh, that, they're, that, they're, that this is of them and, and we're figuring it out together, um, the ideas really do flow. We'll hear, uh, for example, Starbucks wanted uh, in June when we were doing Red Rush campaign to zero, we were saying, Starbucks, how would you like to participate, is there any, anything in particular? And they had an interest in having their social media take a spike. Mm -hmm. So we just said, if you go into Starbucks and check in at Foursquare, you don't have to buy coffee, just check in, Starbucks is gonna give a dollar to the Global Fund. Well, 250,000 people did that like this. And you can't be in Starbucks and not buy the coffee. So of course they're going to end up selling the coffee. Uh, but it was a total win because all of a sudden they saw the spike in the number of people on Foursquare and everybody wanted a Starbucks badge and you know all of these things that are incredibly motivating these days. So wondering if you have any strategic advice that you might be able to share with folks that are interested in figuring out ways to be more planful and deliberate about how they can strike that balance between doing good for the world and having a great business at the same time. Yeah, I, I would say, um, quite frankly, it's not an option anymore. Um, I think you need to do that, that your company has to stand for something. And you won't get away for very long with writing a check that nobody knows about because it's a day of transparency, it's a day of engagement. You're con consumers really want to be engaged with the brand in some way um, and companies should get credit for that engagement mm -hmm. in some way. So I feel like the rules have changed and 
Um, I don't know. I'm really big on relationships, and I feel that it has to really work from um, a perspective of, of what the company is about, what their DNA is about, and it has to be a natural fit.